Yeah, so a few things here about cultural appropriation, which there's a lot of sensitivity to these days. Uh, so, you know, here we are in the dominant culture facing a disintegration of the culture, really. Uh, a, a severance of our ties to tradition, um, to our indigeneity, to our structures of meaning. Um, and, and so we're, we're hungry for these things. Um, we're hungry for rituals that feel authentic. We're hungry for stories that tell us who we are. We're hungry for a sense of belonging. We're hungry for identity, because identity is built through relation relationships, and our relationships have been attenuated and reduced by consumer culture, by technology. So, so here we are, hungry for meaning, hungry for identity, hungry for belonging. And then we come across indigenous practices, rituals, stories um, that offer um, offer some meaning, offer some identity. So one form of appropriation is to like latch onto that and identify with that. And it's like, it's almost like you're kind of using it um, almost as like a consumer product to meet an unmet need. At the same time though, there's also a, a really authentic, beautiful longing here. Like th that, that, that comes from the, the bankruptcy of our culture. The danger is to bankrupt the other cultures too and to, to turn them into you know, workshop leaders and, and to kind of commoditize their culture and essentially strip mine their culture just as we strip mined their places, uh, their mountains, their rivers, their soils. Um, and there's still something left. It's the culture. And maybe we can strip mine that as well. So that's, that's one of the dangers. You know, so you have, yeah, so like the hunger for identity and, and meaning, you know, so maybe you practice yoga and you take on a Hindu name and you identify with, and you do Hindu rituals, you know, from the yoga tradition. Um, and that meets some of the need, perhaps. And I'm not necessarily even saying this is a bad thing, because there's another level here where all of the uh, cultures on Earth that were not fully colonized, and that, I say fully, because most of them have been to some extent. There are very, very few, if any, well, there are few, maybe, more or less pristine cultures that have, have escaped uh, the influence of modernization. But even the ones that have been heavily influenced, there's usually something there that has been preserved. And that's been preserved for a reason. It's been preserved not, and the reason isn't um, to keep it uh, and to protect it, uh, to, to preserve our traditions. Traditions never were preserved. They never were static. They were alive and organic, and they evolved over time. And each culture then, through what has been preserved, or what has not died, what has not been colonized, um, has a gift to offer the, the planet today. Like these precious treasures that have been uh, kept sacred and kept safe within Maori culture, within every culture outside of the dominant culture, those are part of the great reunion, the coming together, the next evolutionary step of the planet. They've been kept safe for a reason. And the time, and um, this isn't just like me, some white guy making this up, okay? This comes from um, a lot of deep conversations and communion with wisdom keepers. And they all say the same thing which is that the time has come for the hidden treasures to be made visible, to be brought into the world, to be shared. Whether it's by uh, indigenous people, whether it's um, uh, secret like mystery schools, lineages that have within dominant cultures have kept certain knowledge safe and secret, 
it was necessary for it to be secret and no longer necessary. So all of the hidden gifts are coming to the surface right now for the times that we are in. So I think that um, yeah, I think this is, and it might be a, a bit of a contentious thing to say, um, especially as a person with pale skin, but maybe those of you who are connected to these traditions can feel the truth of it, that all things, ultimately, all gifts are meant to be given forward. So there's um, an element that's still necessary of protecting it, protecting it from being monetized, commercialized, strip mined, uh, basically to keep it sacred, but no longer to keep it secret. To say, yeah, this is a sacred offering to the world. We would love for you to learn our dances, but not to learn them as some kind of spectacle to put on a performance and charge money for it, but to learn them as the gateway to a deeper knowledge that we've kept safe for you. And when, it, when that knowledge is offered and accepted with permission and grounded in that lineage, and connected with a whole way of thinking and a whole value system and uh, part of this arising story, when it's done in that way, that's not cultural appropriation. That's receiving a gift respectfully and accepting the duty that comes with a, a, a gift, the obligation that comes with a gift to pass the gift forward, to use that gift for the purpose that it's there for and not to divert the gift toward um, narrow self-interest.